You know, something was striking in that video at the beginning that goes along with what I'd like to share with you this evening. And that is that in a great time of devastation, the people rallied at the church. People rallied at the church. And I was told years ago, there's three homes that we ought to desire to have. Number one, we ought to desire to have a heavenly home someday. You know, I trust that if you're here this evening, I trust that you know the Lord Jesus Christ as your Savior. If not, I pray that you would consider what Christ has done for you. The only way you can have a heavenly home is through Jesus Christ. So someday I trust that every one of you will have a heavenly home. The second home that, that uh, was mentioned to me is obviously an earthly home. Not a, not a home, not a house, but a home, whether that be individual or a husband and wife or a husband and wife and children. But a home, a place you call home, however many people are in that home, it need not matter. But the third home that well, I was told that is very important that we have a heavenly home, an earthly home. The third one is what they talked about on that video in the beginning, and that is a church home. A church home. And over the last little bit, I've been meeting with uh, several people that have been coming to Anchor Baptist Church, and they have uh, been, we've been discussing in their homes about uh, being a member of Anchor Baptist Church. Some of you are new members, and I'm so glad the Lord led you to Anchor Baptist Church. The local church, Anchor Baptist Church, is obviously the one we're talking about this evening, our church here, has been commissioned by God. We've been commissioned by God to carry out the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ. We have not been commissioned by God to have, uh, have uh, programs or have anything that would, that would take away from that or would distract us from our main focus and our main focus being giving the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ, reaching the lost, giving money to places like the Philippines and other. We send money all over the world to reach, the, reach people with the gospel so that they can start local churches, so that they can have a little hut where they can meet and preach the word of God and people can be saved and hear the gospel. That is part of the purpose of the local church. But another purpose of the local church is not only reaching the lost, but secondly, perfecting the believers. Growing the believers. Helping you and helping me to grow in grace. It's not just a matter of getting someone the gospel and then getting to know the Lord Jesus Christ as Savior, and that means the work is done. We know that the Great Commission is more than just uh, preaching the gospel, but it's, it's a threefold thing. It's baptizing them. It's training them to do likewise, and I'm so thankful that we have a place like that here. As we think about the local church, I'd like you to take your Bibles this evening and go with me to Acts chapter number 2. Acts chapter number 2. By definition, the church is a group of called out, a called out believers meeting together for the cause of Jesus Christ. The term in the Greek is ekklesia. It's been said that without people there can be no church. And that's definitely true. But it's also been said without the, without the place there can be no church. I want you to think about that for a moment. And sometimes we might hear today is we can, we can basically just get a few Christians together no matter where we are and we can have church. Well, yes, God says where two or three are gathered together, there am I in the midst of them. But I think as we look into the word of God, we find that it's very clear that there is a definite place and there is a definite meeting place. It doesn't have to be a building. But there's a place where the church meets and gathers together for reaching the lost, for equipping the saints. The church, as we said, is a called out group of Christians meeting in a specified place. I want to challenge you tonight regarding the importance of the local church. I also would like to challenge you this evening for this, this, uh, this thought. What is the function of the local church? What is the function? Why are we here? Why do we have the church? God has designed it and planned it for we as Christians, and I'm assuming that you're a Christian tonight. If you're not, that's okay. We're glad that you're here. We trust that someday God's Spirit will bring conviction upon your heart 
and you too will be saved. But God has designed it and planned it for Christians to be vitally related to a local church. To be related to a local church. Think about this for a moment. How important is the local church? In the, in the early day, in the New Testament, the local church was the place of activity. It was, the, it was the place to be. It was not only the place of activity, but it was also, number two, the place of authority. There was something about putting them themselves under the authority and, and activity of a local called out group. We find this in Acts chapter number 11 and 13 and 15. And, and we, won't, we won't turn to there. We're going to be uh, at in Acts 2 in just a moment if you'll allow me to lay a little bit more groundwork. It is often said, and I've heard it said many times, and I've even said it, you can be a Christian without going to church. We know that's true. It's not about going to church that makes you a Christian. You can be saved without going to church. And I'm thankful salvation is not in the, tr in the church. This is a definitely a true statement. However, I would submit to you tonight that if you are trying to live the victorious Christian life, I would almost say it is impossible to live the victorious Christian life apart from a relationship with a local Bible preaching church. I don't know about you tonight, but I don't want to just be a Christian. I don't know about you tonight, but I don't just want to be saved. I don't, know, I, don't, I don't know about you tonight, but I don't want my salvation to simply be a fire insurance policy. I'm thankful tonight that I will not be going to hell someday. If you know tonight that you will not be going to hell someday, can we get an amen out of that? I'm so glad I'm not going. Aren't you glad you're not going to hell tonight? I'm so glad that when I die, I'm going to be present with the Lord Jesus Christ. I never have to suffer eternally for my sin. Jesus paid it all, all to him I owe. But I'll tell you tonight, it's time that we as God's people... Don't just sit, on our, sit in an easy chair and thank God that we're saved. It's time we make sure that we're doing something for the King of Kings. We talked about his death this morning. We talked about him going to the cross and we're working our way to Calvary. My friends, he did that for you. He did that for me because he loves us so much. I'm so thankful tonight that I am, uh, I am I'm saved. I'm going to heaven. But oh, this morning, uh, this evening, uh, trying to live the victorious Christian life without a local church is like trying to fly a kite without the string. Go try it. It's not going to happen. You can say, I've got a kite. Yeah, you'll have a kite. Try to fly it without the string. Doesn't work that way. That's what it's like being a victorious Christian and not having an affiliation with a local Bible-believing church. It's like trying to sail a boat without a sail, drive a car without a steering wheel. I guess you could do it without a steering wheel, but it wouldn't be very easy. I'm so thankful. Boy, I tell you, the local church for me is so important. Amen. You say, well, you're the pastor. Well, I've only been a pastor for about 13 years. I've been alive a lot longer than 13 years. And I'll tell you tonight, I don't know where I'd be if it wasn't for the local church. Amen. I don't know where I'd be tonight if it wasn't for people that loved my dad and loved my mom, loved my grandma, loved my grandma on both sides and told them about the Lord and told them how to be saved. Where did they hear that from? The local church. Where did they, where did they get equipped to live for God? Where did they get equipped to grow in grace? It was the local church. I'm so glad tonight for the local church. My friend, let us never get to the point where we believe the lie of the enemy that the local church isn't that important. I want you to think about it tonight. Where would you be without the influence of the local church? Devastation hits in the Philippines and they ask the, they ask the preacher, what do you have that we don't have? They ask the Christian, what do you have that we don't have? They say, we have Jesus. Why do they have Jesus? Primarily because somebody from a local church said, let me tell you about the love of Jesus. Let me tell you about how he died for you. Let me tell you about how he's, he's alive and he wants to live in you and, and use you for his glory. My friends, tonight, we got to be so thankful for the local church. God designed and planned it for you and planned it for me to be a part of the local church. Acts chapter 2, I'm sure we found it by now. And we're getting warmed up. Verse 42. 
And they continued steadfastly in the apostles' doctrine and fellowship and in breaking of bread and prayers. I know you've read these verses before. I don't, I don't claim to give you some new divine revelation that I had this afternoon. But I do want to tell you this, this evening that God has something for every member of Anchor Baptist Church. And tonight if you're here and you regularly attend here and you're not a member of Anchor Baptist Church, you need to prayerfully consider being a member Amen. of Anchor Baptist Church. You say, why am I going to go to heaven if I'm a member? No, but because God has designed the church for you and for me as believers to be a part of. And by the way, I want to take it a step further. Further, It's not so that we can just simply be a member. Well, I tell you, when we are a member of a church, it activates us. It, it, it allows us to be an active part in the outreach and in the ministry and what we're talking about here. Number one, we see the function of the local church. And we'll just look at a few of these words tonight. Number one, we see the word fellowship. Fellowship. The word fellowship here in Acts chapter 2 means to share in common. When we come here and we open up the only book that God has ever written, the Bible, and we read from the only book that God has ever written from the Bible, we share something in common. I hope we do. I hope we share this in common, that this is the only book, this is the only inspired book, and this is the only life-changing book that we have tonight, and it's the Word of God. We share that in common. We don't fellowship around multiple books. We fellowship around one book, the Word of God. We have common goals. I hope tonight, I hope tonight you have a common dream for your family. See, we share that here as a church. Well, I'm so, I'm so concerned many times in my own parenting and in our parenting tonight that we're just going to let our kids go and do whatever they want. And, and they go, hey, do you have any dream for your kids tonight? Man, I have a dream for my kids. I have a dream for my grandkids. And we come together here in this called out assembly that we share the same hopes for one another. You know what I hope for everyone here tonight? I hope for everyone here tonight that we die faithfully serving the King of Kings. I hope for everyone here tonight that we die loving the Lord Jesus Christ with all of our heart, body, soul, mind, and strength. I have a dream for all of you here tonight that if you fall, that you'll get back up because a just man falleth seven times and riseth up again. You know what? That's what we share in common. We have that in fellowship that's part of the local church Amen. it's the purpose that we have in life that we share together by the way we're not all cookie cutters here tonight I'm so thankful we all weren't cut out of the same mold we're different but God loves us exactly how we are but we come together in unity go with me to first Corinthians chapter number 12 please tonight and we'll, we'll try to uh, keep an eye on the time and we'll just watch it go by first Corinthians chapter number 12 you know I'm excited about the local church think about it Take out the local church in your life. Take it out. You say, well, I, I, I'm, I'm third generation Christian. Yeah, but if you take it out of your life, your grandfather never got saved. Your grandmother never got saved. You got to take it out completely. Think about it. What's so valuable? Christ died for this place. Christ died for this institution. This is not Anchor Baptist Church's church. This is not Pastor Turner's church. This is the church of the Lord Jesus Christ tonight. And we need to make sure that we have the right focus and we're doing something for God. Look at 1 Corinthians chapter 12, verse 25. That there should be no schism in the body. We could also use the word division there. No schism in the body. Notice. But that the members, it's talking about the local church. You can read through the rest of this chapter. You'll find that's the context but that the members should have the same care one of another. This is part of the beauty of the local church, is that, that I have the same care for every member of the local church. What does that mean, the same care? Oh, tonight, I'm sure a few of you have some things on your heart tonight. If you read the rest of the verse there, it says, when one member suffers, what do we do? We all suffer together. Why? Because we're part of the local church. It's not just this little part of the local church is, is, is over here. We do our thing. This little part does their thing here. This little part does their thing here and over there. It's only, only the teenagers are over here and only the teenagers can talk to teenagers and, and so forth and so on. No, it's all of us coming together. It's all of us loving the Lord together. It's all of us heading for the Lord Jesus Christ and for what he wants for our life. And it's coming together. Where does that happen at? It happens that at the local church. Amen. Tonight, we don't want division in the local church. We want to serve God together. We want to be of one mind, striving together for the faith of the gospel. And that's part of the local church. Let's read on. One member be honored. 
all members rejoice with it. You see, when one person gets a, gets a raise at work at the local church and one person gets a new job at the local church, we say, praise the Lord for that. Amen. That's so exciting. We don't say, man, I should, why didn't I get that raise? That should have been my job. No, we say, praise the Lord. Why? Because we're brothers in Christ. Because we're sisters in Christ. Why? Because we're all members together. When one member has a difficulty coming in their life, we grieve for that member. We pray for that member. How we love that member. That's all part of the fellowship. I'm so glad for the fellowship of the body of Christ, aren't you? You see, but we, it's sometimes I don't, we, don't, we don't know so-and-so or somebody is mentioned. And I, I want to be loving tonight and please know my heart tonight. But somebody says, well, so-and-so. And we say, well, who's so-and-so? My friends, the reason how we get to know every so-and-so is when so-and-sos are at church every, every Sunday. And when they're in church every Wednesday, that's how we get to know so-and-so. I want to encourage you tonight. Be faithful to the house of God. Why? Because you need to be a part of that fellowship. You're going to need it. Who are you going to call when tragedy strikes? You're going to call your boss at work? I would hope not. Who are you going to call? You're going to call somebody in the church. You're going to go like the Filipinos went to that man on the island and said, I don't get it. What, you, what do you have? Who are you going to call when a family member has a, has a disease and you don't know if they're saved? And I, I pray that you'll share that with us so we can pray for them. That's part of the fellowship. By the way, it's not just for one class. It's for all class. Amen. We're all here together, unified under the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ. Right. Fellowship. Turn to Hebrews 3 quickly. Hebrews 3. By the way, let me just challenge you parents with something tonight. By the way, I, I, I've got to work on it too. But think of this, parents, tonight. Let me challenge you with this thought. Whatever you make important in your house, your kids will make important in their life. Think of it. Whatever I make important in my house, the kids that I influence are going to cause to be important in their life. What's that mean? That means if church is a hobby for you, it's going to be a hobby for your kids. And it's probably going to be less of a hobby. Church should never be a hobby. Amen. Church is a commitment. Good. God is a commitment. The Lord Jesus Christ is a commitment. Amen. You know what? We don't need just converts. Do you know what we need? We need disciples. Amen. That's what we're supposed to be. A disciple for the Lord Jesus Christ. Yes, if you trust the Lord Jesus Christ, believe in thine heart and verbalize it with your mouth and call upon him. He will save you. But my friends, it doesn't stop there. It's only beginning there. And now we need to be a Berean Christian and we need to get ourselves in the word of God. We need to immerse ourselves in the word of God. Our homes need to be a place that emphasize the local church. Amen. What you emphasize, what you, think, what you say is valuable and important, that's what your kids are going to value. Hebrews chapter 3, verse 13. But exhort one another daily. But exhort one another daily. While it is called today, lest any of you be hardened through the deceitfulness of sin. Part of the fellowship of the local church is experiencing um, encouragement, exhortation. As we see one another faithfully living for God and trying to do our best for God's glory, it encourages us. I told John tonight over there in the 5 o'clock hour, I said, John, you, you, you deciding to be obedient to the Lord in baptism is going to be an encouragement to another Christian. It is an encouragement to see people living for God. It is an encouragement to see people faithful to the Lord. That's what being a part of the local church is all about. Not just being here so that people see me here, but, but pleasing the Lord. And because I love the Lord, but encouraging one another. Amen. Notice here it says, lest any of you be hardened through the deceitfulness of sin. The local church is a place of encouragement. The local church is a place of comfort, support. But it's also a place of admonition where we'd be admonished with the word of God. I don't mean to go back and re-preach messages, but if you weren't able to be here on Wednesday night, I, I trust that you'll go on our, our church Vimeo account and you'll listen to the preaching from the Bible on the subject of bitterness. Good. You say, oh man, I almost came Wednesday night. Well, you should have almost, you shouldn't have just almost came. You should have been here. 
I know we can't always be here, okay? I understand that. God knows your heart. That's the most important thing tonight. And if you can say in front of God, God knows I couldn't have been here, fine, we'll live with that. But I tell you, go back and listen to that truth. Because if you allow bitterness to stay in your life, if I allow bitterness to stay in my life, there is no way I'm going to be able to live for God how God wants me to live for Him. You say, well, why are you talking about that? Because I, I just want you to understand something. We, we don't, I don't just stand up here and, and, and give uh, uh, my opinion. We, 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 we give the word of God. Amen. Why? Because I want to help you. Yeah. I want to exhort. Preach the word. Be instant in season. Out of season. Reprove. Rebuke. Exhort. With all long suffering. The local church is a place of fellowship. Amen. So we go back to Acts chapter 2. The local church is a place. Acts chapter 2, verse 42. And they continued steadfastly in the apostles' doctrine. Doctrine. We know what doctrine is. Doctrine is teaching. The local church provides biblical sound teaching. Why? Because it's necessary for me. It's necessary for you to grow. God has given us in Ephesians chapter 4, verse 11, I won't turn there, but God has given us leaders in the church to instruct us, to lead us, to train us, to care for the people of the church. Tonight, I want you to know that as your pastor, it is my honor and privilege when you have a need, when you have a prayer request, when you say, I, 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 I'm struggling in this area, pray with me. See, that's part of the local church. Amen. You'd be able to pick up the phone or, or text message or whatever somehow and communicate and say, boy, I tell you, pray about this or I've got this problem or I'm not, <clears throat> I'm not anything special tonight. I realize that. I realize I have, a, I have feet of clay like all of us here tonight. But I'm so thankful that God has designed the local church in the way that he has. And I'm so thankful that God has brought you here tonight. Amen. I have a dream for you. I have a vision for you. That you would continue to be faithful to the Lord until the day he returns or until the day you take your last breath. Amen. Well done! Amen. Thou good and faithful servant. Place of teaching. Would you go with me to 1 Thessalonians chapter 5? 1 Thessalonians chapter 5. I want to share with you this tonight, and I know you, I think you probably know my heart if you're visiting here. I trust that you'll know the spirit in which this is given. The Bible says in verse 12, And we beseech you, brethren, to know them which labor among you and are over you in the Lord, and admonish you, and to esteem them very highly in love for their work's sake. And be at, what's that next word? Peace. Wow. You know what that's saying? That's saying that we as the body of Christ, we need to be aware of those who labor over us in the Lord. Notice it doesn't say Lord over us. What it doesn't say there. I'm not lording over you. I'm laboring with you, but I'm laboring in the Lord over you as a spiritual leader of the church, as the under-shepherd, that we obviously love the spiritual leaders that God, God puts in our life. We have an adult Sunday school teacher. Maybe you have a youth pastor that you're in the youth group, and so Brother and Mrs. Ravert are a spiritual leader in your life. It says that we need to be uh, loving those spiritual leaders, but notice that, that, that ending there. Let us not forget that and be at peace so thankful for several times, and I'm sure it'll happen again, but I'm so thankful for several times, uh, maybe, maybe more than several now, where many of some of you in this room and, and others have, have come to me and said, you know, I need to talk to you about something. 
And we've talked about something that happened and maybe it wasn't necessarily the right thing that happened, but we were able to work it out and we were able to make sure that there was peace among us. Because if that's not dealt with properly, the Lord tries to bring us together, the enemy tries to divide. The Lord tries to build the church, the the enemy tries to destroy the church. The local church is a place of fellowship. It's a place of teaching. Notice in verse 42 of Acts chapter 2, as we move back there quickly. Notice the last three words of Acts 2.42, and in prayers. And in prayers. The local congregation of believers must be committed to bringing needs before God on behalf of one another. I want to just, I want to just, I want to leave you a thought, and I don't know if I'm, how much more I'm going to go tonight, but I want to leave you with this thought. We know that the Bible many times brings up prayer and fasting. Prayer and fasting. I want to just tell you something tonight. That's been one of the weakest areas of my walk with the Lord is fasting. Sure, we can pray, and we can pray, and we can pray, and we do pray, and, and I, I, I'm not where I need to be in my prayer life either, but You know, God's really been working on my heart in this area of fasting. And fasting for me has always been something that I don't really like to talk about it publicly. And and I don't think we should. And I don't think the Bible says, you know, don't go around with a somber look on your face. It says, you know, wash your face and, and, you know, carry on as you always would and and, and live for the Lord as you always would. And, you know, don't put a poochy lip disease on your face because you're hungry, you know. And 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 that's the way I've always thought about it. But, you know, I really want to tonight as as your pastor, I want to I want to challenge you. I want you to consider this. Do you have a regular fasting schedule in your life? Maybe you have a medical thing and you can't necessarily completely fast. I don't know. You'll have to talk to your doctor about that. But I know this. Most of us in this room tonight, that's not an issue. We want God to do some great things in our life, don't we? The Bible says that Jesus said, hey, fellas, this kind cannot come forth. It only comes forth but by two, two ways, prayer and fasting. God's been convicting me about that. God's been convicting me about that, and I've been tra- starting to apply that conviction to my life. I'm not saying I'm there yet, but I'll tell you, I want to know God in a greater way. Amen. I want to see God do some things in this church and in my life and in the life of our family. But it all comes back to, it all comes back to, and again tonight you're hearing it. And I don't know why I brought that up tonight. I just felt like the Lord wanted me to. But God has a plan for you and God has a plan for me. God has something great for you. One of the plans he has for us is to be intimately involved in the ministry of the local church. It's for you. God gives it to us. It's a gift. Notice verse 43. And fear came upon every soul, and many wonders and signs were done by the apostles. The people in a spirit-filled church should be a living testimony of the grace and power and demonstrating power of the Holy Spirit of God. You know, that God still wants to work through you, and God still wants to work through me in a supernatural, powerful way. I don't believe God is done doing miracles. I don't believe God is done uh, using us for his glory. And I want to encourage you tonight. Let the Lord have his way. God has a plan. Part of his plan is the ministry of the local church. And we could read down through that. I want to ask you tonight. Take the local church out of your life. Where would you be? Just take it out. You never walked the aisle at that place because there was no church. The guy never came by and knocked on your door because there was no local church. The Sunday school teacher never invested in you because there was no Sunday school teacher because there was no local church. Think about it. God has a great purpose for the local church. It wasn't just for Acts. It wasn't just for Corinth. It wasn't just for Ephesus and Galatia and Thessalonica. It was for Burnaby. Amen. It's for Cameron Street. It's for the Lowheed Mall area. It's for your street. It's for my street. It's for everywhere we go with the gospel of God. It's for your children. 
It's for our kids. Someday, maybe, it's for our grandkids, the local church. It's vital. Christ died for it. How are you investing in the local church? I'm not talking about money. I'm talking about your life. I wonder tonight if, if in the last month, I wonder in the last month, will you evaluate your life in this fashion? In the last month, what have I done for the Lord through the local church except come and sit in the service? Hmm. To me, if that's all I did was come and sit in a service, that would almost appear like I'm coming to church to see what the church can do for me. If that's all I did. Do you know that's not the attitude that we ought to have about church? The attitude about what we ought to have about church is what can I do for the Lord through the church? This is not, this is not a place, this is the, the, the Anchor Baptist Church is not a club. You just have to club, come to club meetings. Man, we're in this. We're in this for the king. We're in this for the one who loves us. We're in this for the one who died for us. And by the way, everyone, everyone can serve God. There's no one here that cannot serve God. Have you prayed for, have you prayed for our missionaries that we support? Have you prayed for those on our prayer page? Is God not worthy of our lives? He is. He's worthy. Take out the local church. Where would you be? I would say, well, obviously, it's pretty easy to figure that out. We would all be on our way to hell, most of us. Because in some way, the local church has influenced all of this. That's why God started it. That's why Christ started it. And today, we have the privilege over 2,000 years later to carry on the great message of the gospel. Amen. We have just as much of a privilege as John and Peter and Paul and all the rest of them to serve God today. 